You say in our language, Tichub, the Tittite, the Saichet. That means that our people are from the land and that we're rooted in that land. Ron's family is digging up a native vegetable, camas root, just as his ancestors have done since time immemorial. I told my grands, one of my little grandsons, I told him, this is Indian candy. <laughs> and he really likes candy. <laughs> Lately, gathering these culturally significant plants has meant traveling off the Warm Springs Reservation in order to find them. These are our last ones. They were pretty small this year. I noticed that. Very tiny. Today, this centuries-old practice is in peril. I've got 35 years of history on this particular piece of ground. Rick Hensley is a rancher in the John Day Basin along Fox Creek. He too is facing tremendous challenges to his livelihood. These meadows used to be a lot wetter this time of year than they are now. The challenge with water in Fox Creek is it's becoming less reliable and less available for livestock use and irrigation needs and forage production. Ranchers all along the creek have witnessed the water disappear over time and recognize the need for action. It's getting less and less likely that they're going to be able to overcome these impacts. The landowners have been interested in working on Fox Creek for the past 15 years. They were wanting to bring up the water table, they were wanting more floodplain connection. The loss of water would definitely limit livestock production, but also would suppress the use by wildlife and other species that need these streams to survive and thrive. Including plant species, like camas, now struggling to grow where it once flourished, and native fish, like steelhead, whose numbers are in decline. Steelhead and other anadromous fish are important to the tribes as a culturally significant food source for as long as they've been on the land. Throughout a turbulent and often violent history, landowners and tribes in eastern Oregon have been in opposition. But here, faced with the threat of losing this critical resource, is where they find common ground. And for the tribes, there is more, a deep reverence for this ancestral land. In the Treaty of 1855, the tribes of Middle Oregon ceded 10 million acres of land to the U.S. government and reserved a 640,000 acre reservation as a permanent homeland. The joke in Indian country is, I do not go to Safeway to buy my traditional foods. I have to come out here and know where they are. Our people traveled, mainly following the, the seasons of the food, the fish, the deer, the berries, the roots. We reserved all of those in our treaty, the right to continue to utilize our ceded land. The treaty language also protected and retained these rights on all 10 million acres of land for future generations. They maintain co-management authority over, over the lands within that area. And so they maintain the right to hunt, gather, pasture livestock on open and unclaimed lands. Open and unclaimed lands include federal lands, but not privately owned property. The tribes have access to funding and the expertise to implement projects like this. And that partnership is really important on private lands to implement these projects and have this habitat restored at this level. We want to implement projects that are going to benefit landowners because we're doing it on private lands, but will also benefit the tribes and the resources that the tribes find important. We want to improve it on the watershed scale and not just one spot or one property. However, overcoming the landowner's reluctance at having the tribes lead the restoration will be a challenge. I think you're focused on, on fish and, and fish issues. Different interests in the resources does create uneasiness, but having healthy streams and, and 
uh, uplands is, is a benefit to all parties involved. It is that consideration for these valuable natural resources that bring folks together to find solutions. Solutions that must also remedy land management practices from the past. Fox Creek has been historically used for agriculture. They moved the channel and straightened it. As the water comes through the stream, it eats away at the banks and just continues to erode and get deeper and deeper, and the water table just drops. It's just acted as a, as a drain pipe for all the surrounding meadows. The goals of the landowners and the tribes intersect where the water flows. To succeed will require significant effort both on land and in the water. And most importantly, trust. Water gets complicated. There's not any overabundance of water anywhere in this country. Fox Creek runs across Randy Hansen's property. He is the first landowner to move forward with the tribe's restoration project. It was probably a three-year thing, you know, talking to Warm Springs. We talked up front about what I wanted to uh, bring the creek level back up and put the meanders back in, get some vegetation growing along it. So in the winter time, when the snow comes off and it floods the meadows, they flood better and then the water perks back in during the summer in the hot months and keeps the water cooler to benefit the steelhead and whatever other fish. The bulk of the construction will be done this year. In addition to the in-stream work, we have some off-channel watering going in. We had to keep the cows from watering in the creek. The Warm Springs tribe, they, they went to a lot of effort to uh, bring water down the hill from a large spring, which is going to be a huge benefit. Next, they set about restoring the creek's natural winding path, recreating the meanders and floodplain that had been removed and disconnected decades ago. This is the new stream channel that we made, but if you imagine where it was, it was over there and it was straight and it was probably about five feet at times six feet below where we're standing. By raising up this channel, we're able to connect this stream to the floodplain. So it creates for improved hang productivity and better grazing for cattle. What these log jams are designed to do is provide fish habitat. So in the spring, when the heavy rains are coming and the water is moving really quickly, it provides fish with a place to rest. Um, and also throughout the summer, when it, the waters are getting low, it provides a place for them to stay in cooler water. Critical improvements are not only happening in the creek, but all along its borders, where thousands of plants and trees are being planted. And fencing is strategically installed to protect the new greenery from cattle, deer, and elk. They fenced off a pretty good um, portion on each side of the creek uh, that I had to give up from uh, grazing ability, but it probably more than gained it back by increased production on the, on the meadows. Adding vegetation to the creeks helps to stabilize the banks and reduce erosion. It also improves water quality, specifically temperature. High temperatures are a limiting factor for steelhead recovery, and so riparian vegetation helps to maintain cool water throughout the watershed. If you take care of the fish, that means the creek is healthier. If the creek is healthier, that means that there's more water in it, and uh, that helps the ranchers. And the benefits of the project are not only measured in habitat preservation. When the tribe has a restoration project and needs heavy equipment or workers, they can hire local people, put them to work on those projects. The team worked hard to reshape the land from one end of Randy's property to the other but it's going to take everyone working together to achieve the ultimate goal. The considerate ranchers realize that they're just caretakers of the land and it's gonna be here for their children and future generations. So the hope is that everybody will jump on in Fox Creek, the whole distance of it will get improved. I'm all for doing whatever it takes to raise some of these late summer flows, improve fish habitat. 
the hopes for Fox Creek are as vast as the valley itself. And with time, effort, and cooperation, it may be possible to restore the entire basin. And protect the time-honored traditions of the tribes and the residents who live here. Projects like this are exciting and we're looking forward to working with more landowners to have a partnership that improves their operations and their property as well as the fishery resources for the tribe. The natural resources of the John Day Basin are very valuable and I think there is a need to continue investing in these projects to help these landowners be good stewards of the land, continue that, that legacy into the future.